Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about JSON Web Tokens or JWTs. In particular, I want to show you an option that I don't think is well known, which is the use of public key signature uh, with these tokens. Uh, so I'm going to start by giving you a brief introduction to Pi JWT, which is the package that I use when I work with JWT tokens in uh, Python. So I'm going to uh, create a virtual environment where I can install Pi JWT. I'm going to activate it and then pip install Pi JWT. There we go. So I'm going to show you how to create a token in a Python session. Uh, I'm going to use just the Python console for this. And the, the function that you use comes from the JWT package and it's JWT encode. And this function takes uh, three arguments. And the first argument is the payload and this is going to be the information that's going to be stored in the token. And if, if you're not familiar with JWT tokens, uh, the, the great thing that they have is that you can store information in them. So I'm, in, I'm going to create a dictionary that's going to be my payload. Uh, in most cases, this is a uh, one or more uh, variables that uh, identify the user that owns the token. So in this example, I'm going to set user ID, say one, two, three, and this is going to be my payload. Uh, I also need to have a secret key. And this is what makes the JWTs secure because all tokens come with a cryptographic signature that prevents anybody from making changes to the token. So for secret key in this example I'm just uh, going to just type some random characters there we go so that's my secret key for this example um, if you're using flask or django uh, you, you can uh, use the secret key configuration variable for for encoding jwts that's perfectly fine I, th that's what i usually do when i work with this type of signature so now I'm ready to generate my token. So I'm going to call JWT encode. The first argument is my payload. The second argument is my key. And the third and final argument is the signature algorithm that I want to use. And the vast majority of people here use an algorithm that's called HS256. So that's what I'm what I'm going to use here. Uh, the return value of JWT encode is a token that's given as a byte sequence. So to make it a little bit more convenient, since it's all printable characters, I'm going to decode it into a UTF-8 string. So there we go. Now I can show my token and there we have the token. Uh, so the most important thing with, with these tokens is to not be fooled into thinking that the token is encrypted. The token is not encrypted, uh, so this, uh, this payload that we sent is actually here. This is the payload, and it's uh, encoded in base 64, uh, but this is not encryption. Anybody that knows a little bit can uh, decode this back into the dictionary. And in fact, I showed how to do this in a previous video where I showed how to decode Flask user sessions. And this is actually exactly the same. So, uh, so remember that this is not encrypted. You should not store anything that's sensitive. Uh, so only uh, information that uh, you don't mind others to see. Uh, so in case you're curious, this part is a header. This contains some information that describes the structure of the token. And this part is the signature. And this is what makes the token secure. Because if I try to hack 
this this uh, portion and change, for example, change the user ID, then that is going to invalidate the signature. And if I don't have the secret key, then I have no way to generate a new signature that matches the new content. So that that's uh, what makes JWT tokens uh, secure. Uh, so, okay, so now I have my token. Uh, before I move on to decoding, I'm gonna show you another thing. Uh, there are other things that you can put in the payload. And one that's very interesting is an expiration date. So I'm gonna add my exp key, which is, it, this is predefined. It's mentioned in the, uh, in the JWT specification. And oh, actually, I need to import time to do this. So I'm going to import time so that I can get my current time. And here I can say uh, time plus, uh, I don't know, 120, that, that will be uh, two minutes. So this token will be valid for uh, only for two minutes. So uh, let's do, uh, let's make this token two. And now we have two example tokens. Um, so once your server generates a token, it needs to return it to the client. And then uh, in future calls, the client will authenticate to you or to your server uh, using this, this token. And the way that works is when the server receives the token in, a, a, for example, in an API call, it needs to figure out if the token is valid. And for that, we use the JWT decode function. This function takes the token as the first argument, secret key as second argument, and the third argument is a list of algorithms that are uh, valid for, for this token. So th this is, uh, uh, in case you support more than one algorithm, the decode function accepts a list of algorithms that you want to be allowed for this token. So in this case, I'm only going to use the same HS256. And when I decode this, I get my, uh, my payload back. Now, if I use an invalid token, so let's say I'm just gonna add an extra character to, to this token, just to make it different. Then I get uh, invalid signature. If, if I change the signature, same thing, I'm gonna get invalid signature. And this is what makes, uh, th this is when I know that the token is invalid and I will not allow uh, the API call, whatever the client wants me to do in the server, if I cannot uh, validate the token. Um, so I think uh, there's probably been more than two minutes. So if I try to decode token two, which is the one that has expiration, uh, I get an expired signature error. Uh, so same thing. Uh, and uh, this is this is super useful because if you make your tokens uh, life the the use the uh, the life of the token short, then you reduce any risk if that token were to be compromised. Uh, so this is what most people do, uh, and what I want to show you is something different because this this usage of JWTs have a disadvantage, and that disadvantage is that to decode a token, you need to have access to the secret key. And if you have a application that is monolithic, uh, so, so basically you have a, a single process where you have both the token generation and the token verification, then this is usually not a problem. Uh, but these days, a lot of people write applications in a distributed fashion. So you have uh, multiple services, maybe two or three, or if, if, if you go uh, full-blown microservices, you may have 20 or more. Um, so uh, in, in those situations, you may have a service that is in charge of generating tokens, and then many of the other services may be receiving those tokens as authentication. 
So if, if all those services need to call into the authentication service to validate a token, then authentication service becomes a bottleneck. Uh, so uh, what, what's ideal is that each service can validate the token uh, without having to make calls into other services. Uh, so you can do that by having the secret key available to all the services. But of course, that uh, that's more of a security risk because the more places you have your secret key, the more the risk of uh, that key getting compromised. And if the key gets compromised, then the person who has the key can generate new tokens. And that's bad. So all of that to say that uh, in, in if, if you're using distributed systems, this is not really a great idea. So uh, with public key signatures, the, the benefit, it, it basically works in the same way, but the benefit is that to decode the token, you don't need to have the secret key. And that's, that's the main advantage. So I'm going to show you how that works uh, quickly. And the first thing you need to do when you work with uh, public key signatures is to install another package, uh, cryptography. And uh, PyJWT supports all those uh, public key algorithms for signatures, but it needs to have cryptography installed for those to be enabled because it depends on the cryptographic algorithms in this package. So that's installed. And then uh, I'm going to show you uh, one of the uh, algorithms uh, for public key signatures that's based on RSA uh, cryptography. And for RSA, uh, you need, for RSA uh, public key encryption and signing, you need to create uh, what's called a key pair, uh, which is a combination of a private and a public key. So, so we're gonna have two keys, not one. And there are a few ways to generate these keys. The one that I like is to use, I'm going to clear the screen here, SSH keygen. This is a utility that comes with OpenSSH, uh, which if, if you have any uh, anything uh, Linux or Mac OS related you have uh, on Windows, if you're not using the, uh, the Linux support, then you will need to find a uh, Windows port and install it, but it, it's also available. Uh, so I'm going to ask for a key of type RSA and I'm going to set the length of the key to 4096 bits, which is what these days is recommended as a secure key length. So this is going to create my public and private keys. It's asking me for a name for these keys and I'm going to call it uh, JWT key. This is going to go in the current directory because I'm, I'm not using any uh, any path names. Uh, I'm not going to use a passphrase because it's not useful for, for this usage. So I'm going to leave those empty. And now I have, let's see, I have this file, which is my private key. And this other file, uh, which is the same name with .pub, which is my public key. So this file I need to protect with my life, basically. I need to make sure that nobody has access to this file. So this file is not going to go into Git. I'm not going to put it in uh, any source control or anywhere where uh, it. basically there's a risk that uh, the people that are not authorized to see it will, will have access to it. To it. This file on the other side is perfectly fine to share and I'm just going to show you what it is because it basically it holds no uh, no sensitive information. There, there's absolutely no problem if this file is seen. You should actually put it any, any, anywhere where, where it's public because uh, anybody who, who wants to verify tokens will need to have this file. So, okay, so now we have, uh, we have our key pair. So let's go back to Python and I'm going to import JWT. 
I'm going to set my payload again, or well, I'm going to use the same thing. Uh, and then my private key, I'm going to call it private key to make sure that I don't confuse these two keys, is going to be the contents of the, uh, the private file. So I'm going to open JWT key and read the contents into this variable. So that's that's my my private key. So now my token is going to be JWT encode the payload, the private key, and the algorithm, which is going to be RS two fifty six. This is the algorithm that uses RSA signatures, and then this is going to be decoded in. To, oops, UTF. Uh, let's see if it works. UTF eight. Of course not. UTF eight here. Oh, I have a typo. Okay, there we go. So the tokens um, look more or less the same. Uh, they're, they're a little bit longer, uh, but. Um, but yeah, otherwise they have the same structure. You can you can identify the three components with the the periods that uh, act as uh, separators. Here's the payload, which looks actually identical to the previous token because, as I said, this is a simple base 64 encoding of the payload uh, with no encryption. Uh, so so this is my token, and now. Just to make sure that uh, that this is clear, I'm going to exit my Python session, and that will clear any uh, any uh, storage of the private key, which I'm not going to use. So I'm going to start a new session that's clean, and now I'm going to assign. I'm going to copy the token back here. And I'm going to use the public key, which is uh, actually I don't even need to read it from a file. I can just take this and paste it here because this is public, it doesn't matter. And to decode the token, I'm going to say GWT decode and then uh, the token, the public key. And then algorithms is going to be RS two fifty six, and that gives me my uh, my payload back. And this was done without using any secrets. So the decoding in this case is completely uh, done in the open. Anybody can uh, verify the tokens that are generated. Uh, but nobody can generate the tokens unless you manage to steal my private key, the private key that I haven't shown you. So, so that's the key for this. Uh, what, I, what I think is a great usage of JWT that uh, that many people don't know about. Uh, so, uh, I, I hope you uh, you adopt this and uh, uh, basically make your your service more secure by not exposing your secret key. Uh, to all those other services that need to decode tokens. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, if, if you're interested about more details about this, uh, there's a blog article. You can see the link to it in the description of this uh, video. So uh, you're welcome to uh, check it out. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.